Not in the face! <laughs> Thank you. Hello and welcome to Hey Not the Face with your host John Nash and your producer, me, Steffi Haynes. And today we're gonna talk about Club Shay Shay. And the reason why is because about a week and a half ago, he interviewed Dana White, and there were so many nuggets of information, so much gilding of the lily. I mean, there was a lot to unpack in this interview. So I put together some questions for John. John, how the heck are you? What you been doing this week? Good, good. Uh, busy, busy week. Uh, when you know, just doing the rounds, met friends and stuff. Uh, I do want to point. I had, I had interesting enough tale. I had a. I went to a pool party the other day out here. Beautiful day in California. So I went to a pool party, and very, you know, everybody there kind of not. None of them were fans of. M- Actually, I, I take that back. One person was kind of kind of a boxing fan. One kind of an MMA or UFC fan, not MMA. But the one thing when they found out, you know, when we started talking combat sports, those two is everybody wanted to pipe in is the one thing they're all excited for. They want to see is Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. And they're all convinced Mike Tyson's going to win. And I got roundly booed by a bunch of people when I started saying, I kind of think Tyson's going to lose. Yeah. And and the other thing is that uh, I don't even know that that's that fight's going to come off. Yeah. You, you know, Jake Paul is already booked a fight with um, Mike Perry that's going to air on DAZN. It's going to cost 65 bucks in addition to your $30 that you're going to pay for your DAZN subscription fee. And then you're going to pay 65 bucks on top of it to watch a bare knuckle FC fight fighter take on an influencer i yeah. just well, love I these I things mean, just to be clear i thought doesn't his own work that when you buy the pay-per-view you get the month of his own free with the pay-per-view i well most people you have to actually be a subscriber to DAZN to buy it i believe i thought you get a month after you buy it but then you're on the you know you're subscribed so you have to cancel, ah, physically cancel. Is that how I, i'm not 100 percent certain but... i'm not either i'm a subscriber um you know, I I'm unfortunately I'm hooked in for a year. Yeah. And I just I keep seeing it the, the prices go up on the pay per views and you know the at the beginning of the year the price went up on DAZN. It went from twenty four ninety nine, now it is twenty nine ninety nine. And and let's not forget that when they first came out, they were the bargain basement nine ninety nine. Come to us, we're we're gonna do away with pay per view. We're gonna eliminate the need for pay per view. Just come Come subscribe with us. If they, had, if they had provided the product, they said, I, even a twenty-five to thirty dollars a month wouldn't have been outrageous. If they were going to give us two huge Canelo fights a year, mm-hmm. if they had Wilder and Joshua, and they're going to put the heavyweights against each other, and go, you know, that if they had the constant stream of stars being um, several times a year in pay-per-view caliber fights, probably be less egregious, but. It, they don't offer those fights, and I mean they offer occasionally, but nothing. And then they offer them as pay per views. They don't offer them as part of the package. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then there's nothing really. If you're just a fight fan, a boxing fan, it's like, what am I getting beyond this? You know, I don't care about uh, snooker. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, so, but just to get those the fans there, they are. I mean, I I mean Perry. I think and Netflix seems still interested in doing the fight with Tyson, but I do think Perry's a threat to to uh to paul oh yes so that could derail it and and but it is amazing is how much people are convinced they all know about the fight this is the second time i was at a wedding when uh, alexander Usyk was fighting tyson fury and i told everybody i'm looking for the tyson fight the heavyweight fight and they all thought i was talking mike tyson they wanted to find it and then they were so grossly disappointed when it was not mike tyson versus jake paul (laughs) oh my goodness so the that fight is going to be massive if it happens and i am floored that people think a man that's 58 at that time is Mm. you know that they all think he's going to win yeah that's just you know it's bonkers absolutely bonkers but uh Getting back to my point, though, for for those of us that are tied into that year plan or that pay by the month that already do that, if you are going to watch this pay-per-view, you're going to pay on top of your subscription fee, and and there's no way around that. So some of us will end up paying over a 100 bucks for that if we happen to purchase it. I won't. 
Yeah, I've, I, I've, I I've, I've no be. interest in Jake Paul fights. So yeah, it's not against Diaz, against anybody. I've never been interested in those fights. Yeah, no, no interest whatsoever. I mean, I'll watch the the replay, the clips that will inevitably populate Twitter until until you know somebody wants them taken down. But I will not be paying sixty five bucks for that fight. Nope, nope, nope. So. Anyways, let's talk about this Club Shay Shay interview because, boy, I my mouth was agape quite a bit in this because, man, Dana White can spin a yarn. But there were a couple of moments, well, one in particular that I felt he was being truthful about. So we'll start there. Um, John, I want to know what you thought of Dana White's comments that it was impossible for Rhonda to thrive and to keep doing well, considering all the extracurricular stuff that they had her doing. Um, in addition to the pressure of basically carrying the women's divisions on her shoulders. Well, first of all, the, I'm surprised the, the, the big question for you is why is it called club Shay Shay? <laughs> uh, I don't get that. I mean, Shannon Sharp is the host, so I guess maybe it's a pun on his double S name. I don't know. I just don't have no clue why it's called Club Shay Shay. Uh, also, I got to say, hats off to Shannon Sharp for giving a, a an incredibly terrible interview where he does did absolutely no. Re it's amazing. He, he, I got to give credit to him that he can hold a show where he does no research. Mm -hmm. And he has no follow-up questions, and he just seems to let the guy. I get that's why Dana White's there. But anyways, uh, the, the Ron, I mean. I, I, this was one of the least egregious things he said because exactly. in some ways he's defending his star. He's trying to make he's trying to give a storyline of why she didn't succeed, but it doesn't quite add up because, uh, yes, she, she, she ride the sport, but you know all through history there's been athletes that have taken the sport in another direction, and we didn't we never said all oh, because they were doing that they couldn't uh, you know Michael Jordan carrying the NBA to new heights we didn't say oh he couldn't practice and beat uh, the Portland Trailblazers that year because he was too focused on raising the NBA right or the Utah Jazz we don't say that about Magic and Larry Bird when they entered the league we don't say that about you know, Muhammad Ali or, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard when he's the biggest thing in the 80s or any of those guys. Uh, so it it doesn't quite add up in my in my opinion. Also, when she was gone and there are other athletes at the very top, kind of the spokespeople, spokespersons for women's MMA, the, I mean, Amanda Nunes did the same thing. And she was kind of, you know, she was put in a position, maybe not to the degree of uh, publicity that uh, – uh, that uh, Ronda Rousey had, but she, you know she was the number one person had all, all these expectations for her, and everybody was shooting for her and, and you know practicing for her, and she she never had a fall, you know, didn't fall down. So I just don't think it's uh it's not an honest answer, but it's uh you know it paints a picture that that makes it you know that keeps uh, probably keeps Ronda's shine brighter than it would be if you just said, listen, other people got better caught up to her and beat her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in this regard though, I, I felt like probably from this interview, that was the most honest that we were going to get from Dana because everything else is just, whoo, it's way out there. Now I, I wanted to ask you one more question about Rhonda because Dana went to the trouble of saying something that caught my eye. And he said, she got out at the right time. And to me, it sounded like he was saying, we got what we wanted out of her. We squeezed the blood from a rock. And maybe they weren't so overly concerned with her sticking around. Did it, did it come off to you like that? Or am I making a mountain out of a mole? Well, I mean, I, I didn't listen to the whole interview together. I saw the clips, which all these clips appear on Twitter or whatever, right? So I watched the individual clips. I saw him talk about this. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe he meant it that way. He could read it that way. I, I took it to mean like, you know, she good she got out because – she, her heart wasn't in the business anymore, and she, everybody else had caught up and was going to beat her. I, I mean, one thing I'll, I'll give Ron a lot of credit. I think a lot of fans are comeuppance when she lost to Holmes and then Nunez. People are like, oh, that was always Ronda. But I'm like, it, it, truthfully, that's not fair because she was light years ahead of everybody else for a while. Mm -hmm. She was. It wasn't like, oh, she was just, you know, she was beating people that weren't ready for her or just she was, she was never good. She was so far above most fighters, but, you know, like the, 
I don't know if it's her problem with her knees. Apparently, remember, she supposedly, you know, has trouble doing a, a double on a shoot because her knees are kind of shot from judo. Uh, if it's just everybody caught up with her, she didn't ever harden it. But, you know, at the end, she was obviously, I think she would just, there were too many fighters that added too much to their arsenal. I mean, the other probability she, pro, thing is she probably depended too much on her coach and the, the terrible boxing she, she was falling in love with and her judo. Like those two aspects alone, like she kept going back to the well, but she still was great. It just, it was obvious at the end that other fighters had caught up and uh, either better ath- athletes or just more rounded or whatever. So it's, it's I mean, a little bit. It is the, you know, we, we compare a lot of them to Hoist Gracie and there is a little bit of that when he met Matt Hughes. Mm-hmm. Well, see, to me, it just, uh, and I'm probably jaded from from all the things that we've been treated to from Mr. White, but it just seemed to me like he was saying, you know, we we used her for everything we could get out of her. And, you know, there was no, because, you know, Shannon had asked him, were you sad when she got out of the business? And he he paused and he said, well... She got out at the right time. I'm sad that I didn't get to work with her on a day-to-day basis anymore. That's how he put it. And to me, it just came across like, well, we got what we needed out of her. And when she wanted to go, we didn't put up a fight. It, it just, I don't know. It yeah, just I, seemed I, like I, that. I just read that a little different because it is. Their, her last two losses were so bad. It's like she got at the right time. Like she had nothing else in the sport was how I read it. But who knows? I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's fine. You know, I just wanted to see what your take on that sp- specific little exchange was. All right. So next up, let's talk about power slap for a minute because power slap is on everybody's radar right now because Paige Van Sant has taken a power slap fight. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why, because she has always said that, you know, UFC did her wrong, bare knuckle, you know, between bare knuckle and UFC, she made, you know, 10 times that with OnlyFans. So when last week it was announced that she was going to have a power slap fight, I'm just flabbergasted. I don't understand why. So that's going to bring us to Dana's grand claims about power slap. And I quote, he says they have billions with a B billions of views. Now, how much of that is fact and fiction, John? How much success do you estimate in your expert opinion? To access the bonus content of this episode, you must be a paid subscriber. To do that, go to heynottheface.substack.com and subscribe today. Ow! Ow! Not the face! Ooh! Ooh! Okay, the face! <laughs>